Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. I'm Pastor George Pearsons, and this is my amazing, beautiful, brilliant, talented, gifted wife, Pastor Terry Copeland Pearsons. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I just have to say how well you read that prompter copy. That was really good. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Just I wrote that for you. That was really good. They did a good job. Yeah, that was really good. Thank you very much. Well, we're so glad to be on the broadcast you, you here with you. You are my wonderful, handsome, amazing, patient, enduring, long time, faithful. I'm writing those down. Yes. For later. Yes, for <laughs> remind me of them again later. <laughs> true. I like you. I like you too. You do? We've okay. been we've been liking each other for, for a, a long, long time. I know, a long time. Okay, back to business back here. Back to business. We are so glad to be on the broadcast with you and we're talking about this week and next 10 days of healing. We are focusing in on the healing power of God and we are seeing to it that we renew our minds to this healing power of God. You know, I like the title of this this program the believer's voice of victory. We have victory. He always causes us to triumph. That's right. He always does. And so we're going to focus today on that, that pathway to victory that the Lord has provided specifically for our healing. That's right. Don't, if you've, if you've been thinking this is hopeless, there's no way out, it's the end of the road for me, Maybe you're being discouraged about yourself or someone else. You've got that in your mind. You're just braced for what's coming next. What's the next plague? What's the next? We've got good news. And we're here to take you by the hand day by day That's right. and help you walk down this path that God has made. This is one of those paths of righteousness. What does yeah. that mean? The path of right, the path, yes. the right path, the path that leads to things being right. And if your body's sick, it's not working right. If it's full of disease, that's not right. And so the path that we're going down, Pastor George takes us to that yeah. right outcome, yeah. which is to live the life that God has for us, which is wellness, spirit, soul, and body. He wants us to be free from that. He wants us to live lives that are so full of his healing power, not just for us, but that it goes through us to be able to minister to others. I remember, Terry, when I first came here, Kenneth Copeland Ministries, 1976, and as I was looking through all the books that the ministry had at the time, there was a book that Gloria had called God's Will is Healing. It's healing. God's Will is Healing. I was and that, about that book this morning. That phrase has stuck with me all of these years, and, and it is what we believe and receive from the Word of God. It is God's will for you to be healed. Believe it, receive it, take it, and know that it is God's most, most gracious desire in our lives to see these physical bodies made well to the place where he created them. You know, you were, as you were talking, and I just, I just had this uh, immediate impression I believe that it's from the Lord and him saying to you right now, and that is if you only understood mm -hmm. two things, how much I hate sickness, how much I hate disease, how much I, I don't want that, as much as I don't want that is how much I want you well. Maybe I should say he wants us, well, even more than he doesn't want us to have it. Oh, the mercy and the compassion of God and how we cut him off and how that must grieve his heart when we question the will of God. He is a loving father and we need to know that. How much when you see a child, your child, who's not feeling well or a grandchild not feeling well and how, how you desire for them to be well and to be whole. Well, if we feel that way as natural parents, how much more, how much more, how much more does the Father want us to walk in the fullness of what he created us to be? It is the will of God for you to be healed. And what we're gonna talk about in this broadcast today is that very fact, the will of God. And we need to know the importance of knowing 
God's will. That's really true about everything, that the importance of knowing God's will and whatever thing, whatever the matter is, because if we don't know the will of God, then you can't really have faith. Otherwise, it's just uh, your own opinion yeah. or presumption, yeah. and that, that won't produce. Yeah, that's right. And have, what I've learned through the years, God's word is his will. Whatever it says in there, it belongs to me. Yeah, the scripture says, God says of himself, he's not a man. Yeah. He's not a man like you that, that might be given to telling a lie or stretching the truth or not being quite clear or one way today and a different way tomorrow. He is not like that. That's right. He is not That's like right. that. His yes is yes. His no is no. And he makes it very clear what he says yes to and what he says no to. Let me read 1 John 5, 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. My goodness, think about that, George. Mm. Listen to the boldness yeah. that's in this statement. Yeah. This is where you stop and meditate on this. This is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, it's a guarantee yeah. that he hears us. Yeah. And if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know we have the petition that we desired of him. Yeah. That's pretty straightforward that's, and that's simple. That's it right there. That's, that's why it. it's important to know the will of God. <clears throat> yeah. To know the will of God, we can be confident what a wonderful place in prayer to be confident of the things we're asking him. Yeah. And if we ask him according to his will, we can be sure he's not going to say no. He's not going to. Faith for healing would stop wherever that question mark is. When yeah. you said, well, I just yeah. don't know if it's his will. Yeah. Well, if you don't know, then you can't come boldly to the throne. Hebrews 4, 16 yeah, says. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Concerning healing, we must no longer use the faith-destroying phrase, if it be thy will. It's settled. It's done. It's over. Jesus paid the ultimate price for us to be healed and to be, will, to be well. Faith for healing begins where the will of God is known. You know, this is not something that Brother Copeland came up with or Sister Copeland, not Brother Hagen. <laughs> it goes all the way back to God himself when yes, he said does. in Exodus, I am the Lord who heals you. Yeah. But I do like to go back sometimes those, not just one or two, but even three generations back sure. of ministers yeah. who had such startling insight to help us in the operation of our faith, especially those who were so successful. Right. And this that you have, you've put in our outline here, which you yep. can get these notes, by the way, by going to kcm.org, mm -hmm. and, and you can download these notes. But this, this pa uh, passage from the book, Christ the Healer oh. by F.F. F. Bosworth. Wow. And he said it so well, I don't, I don't think it, that yep. we can try to improve on it. Just, just read it. Let me read through this. Before anyone can have a steadfast faith for the healing in their body, they must be rid of all uncertainty concerning God's will in the matter. Appropriating faith cannot go beyond one's knowledge of the revealed will of God. Before attempting to exercise faith for healing, one needs to know what the scriptures plainly teach, that it is just as much God's will to heal the body as it is to heal the soul. It is only by knowing that God promises what you are seeking that all uncertainty can be removed and a steadfast faith is made possible. His promises are each a revelation of what God is eager to do for us. Until we know what God's will is, there is nothing to base our faith on. You want to pick up there with that, Terry? Well, the point that we made earlier is that these things come by faith. Yeah. Uh, healing, Jesus said to the woman with the issue of blood in Mark 5, Thy faith has made thee whole. He, he probably didn't say thy faith. That was, you know, but anyway, he said, your faith has made you whole. Yeah. And then in James, yeah. the Bible says that the prayer of faith save will the save sick. the sick. Mm -hmm. So until we know what God's will is, there's nothing to base your faith upon. Right. The first step toward being healed 
is the same as the first step toward salvation or any other blessing that God promises. For that is for the sick person to know what the Bible clearly yes. teaches, yes. that it's God's will to heal until one has lived out the allotted span <laughs> God. of life. Each individual sufferer must be convinced by the word of God that his or her healing is the will of God. For it is impossible to have faith, real faith, for healing as long as there is the slightest doubt as to it being God's will. Yeah, exactly. It's impossible to boldly claim by faith a blessing which we are not certain that God offers because the power of God can be claimed only where the will of God is known. For instance, it would be next to impossible to get a sinner to, quote, believe unto righteousness before you had fully convinced him that it is God's will to save him. Faith begins where the will of God is known. And I'll add in there, it is the will of God for us to be healed. And we'll, we'll feed on that some more as we go along. Faith must rest on the will of God alone, not on our desires or our wishes. Terry? So people say, well, if it's his will, why didn't it just come on me? Well, that's not the way that yeah. God created us to be. He gave you and me, he gave us a choice. Right. He gave us a will to be involved in this. We are to be co-laborers with God. He has done his part, will continue to do his part, will uphold his part with the power of his word. But you and I have a part to, uh, to, to bring this faith action to work. And he says, we have to come to him and receive from him because it's our choice, yep. but we can't confidently receive from him if we don't know what his will is because God will not do something apart from his will. You can't con God. You can't coerce God. You can't fool God into doing something that's crosswise with his will. Okay, appropriating faith is not believing that God can, but that he will. Of course, if you don't believe he can, well, you're undermined as well. Yeah. Those who came, claim to believe in healing, but say one word in favor of it and 10 words against it cannot produce faith for healing. When God commands us to pray for the sick, he means for us to pray with faith, which we could not do if we did not know his will in the matter. Until a person knows God's will, they have no basis for faith because faith is expecting God to do yes. what we know is his will to do. Faith is a spiritual force, but the nature of that spiritual force is an expectation for God to do what he said he would do but you can't expect him to do something when you don't know if it's his will to do it. Yep. When we know it's his will, it's not difficult for us to believe that he will do what we're <laughs> sure he wants to do. There can be no appropriation by faith until we know what God has provided yep. for us. So when we're talking about the will of God, Terry, we're talking about, for instance, God sent his word and healed his people. Well, who, who is the word manifest? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Yep. John, John 1, 14. Mm -hmm. this, this, maybe you've heard this verse before, but maybe you haven't seen it this way. And the word was made flesh, mm. <laughs> dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Yeah. The word of God became flesh. What word? Well, every word that God had spoken yeah. up until the time of Jesus' conception and birth. The word became flesh. But you know what? The word hadn't changed. That's right. His word yeah. still yeah. becomes flesh. Yes. And it doesn't become sick flesh, weak flesh, no. enabled flesh, compromised flesh. The word that the flesh becomes yeah. is healed, whole, strong, well, and able. Absolutely. John 5, 19. The son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the father do. For whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. And what did he do? 
What did Jesus he do? He would preach, he would teach, and he, and would, he would heal. heal. And notice how that came, it was, it was teaching, <laughs> preaching, and healing. So the word went forward yeah. first. Yeah. And as he as the word of God made flesh, the living word, Jesus, was giving the spoken, revealed word, which was the scripture, what happened? It became flesh. It became flesh to the leper. It became eyes to the, the blind. It became uh, strength to the weak and the feeble. It became uh, um, hearing to the deaf. It became uh, whatever was needed yeah. to, for healing. Right. It became that. It became that. The living mm-hmm. word brought the spoken word. Would well, you know what? That's what we're doing right now. That's exactly what we're doing. We are giving you the, yes, spoken the spoken word, word based on the written word yeah. on, because of Jesus, who is the living word. And, and it's, I'll throw this in here now because we'll talk about it later on, but, but the, the, our words become flesh. Mm-hmm. The words that we speak become flesh. For better or worse. Exactly. You know, if you keep talking <clears throat> sickness, yeah. and we'll just tell you this now, we'll get more into depth, as George says. But if you're talking sickness, I'm so sick, I'm so, I'm so weak, I'm so, I've got so much pain, this hurts, that hurts, here's what the doctor said, and that's, that's the environment you're producing with your words, those words become flesh too. And they become flesh that's more sick, more weak, more mm-hmm. susceptible yeah. to disease, and you're undermining the very thing that you desire. John 6, 38, for I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of of him that sent me. So what did Jesus do? He did what he saw the Father do to fulfill the Father's will, and he would he healed people. But what about that time, you know, where the people came to him yeah. and they said, Master, we want to be healed, and he said, no, you can't be healed right now because it's the will of God that you hold that for a few more days, come back in another month or two because you really got something you <laughs> need to learn through this. No, what no. What about that time? Uh-uh. Wait, that's not in the Bible? Didn't happen. Not in the Bible? Mm-mm. Gee, I thought it was. Nope. I heard that. No, nope. not, not in the Bible. No. Nope. As a matter of fact, Matthew 9, 35, Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Yep. So what Jesus, again, teaching, preaching, and Healing, healing, and there wasn't anything yep. that they could present to him that he said, ah, I'm not sure what we're going to do about that one. Or no, that's just, too, that's just too much. God's word won't fix it. But they heard the preaching of the word. They put that first. They, the Bible, it says in other places, it says they came to hear and be healed. Yep. Hearing came first. Then they were healed because they, their yep. faith was activated. Matthew 12, 14, and 15. Then the Pharisees went out, held a council against him, how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. So this points out you've got to make a decision. You need to stop and think about it. What have you believed? What have you been told in the past? What have you thought in the past? What, what maybe you knew in your head it's God's will for you to be healed, but what were your real thoughts about it? What, what was your reaction? What was your, how did you act? Did you act like it was God's will to be well? Or did you act like it's God's will for you to be sick? Did you make, get yourself in line with his will? Or did you just accept whatever came your way? What have you been taught? What have you heard? You have to deal with that. And these people had a choice. There were some who wanted to destroy that message that Jesus was preaching about the blessing and the promise of God. But they rejected that. I'm sure some some said, you know what? Rabbi so-and-so said that's not true. I just, I'm going to stick with him. So you can make your choice. You don't have to be critical of anybody else. Maybe they just didn't see that right now. Okay, but as for you, what is your choice? Acts 10, 38. Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, Um, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, 
for God was with him. I want to point something out to you right here. Jesus of Nazareth, not Jesus of heaven, because mm. God was with him. What does that mean? The anointing oh, of God good. was on him yeah. as a man. The anointing of God is on us. It's a heavenly yeah. substance. Yeah. It's a heavenly equipping. It's a working of the Holy Spirit. But yet, it's, a, it's God at work. That same God at work on your flesh. That same God at work in your faith, in your prayer, yeah. and in your stand. Hallelujah. Yep. The note, well, I'll read this first. Hebrews 1, 3 in the Amplified Classic. Jesus is the sole expression of God's nature. And I what love is that. his nature? It's, well, God, to it's heal. his love. It's to heal, <clears throat> to yeah. help. Yeah. Okay. Um, the note in John 12, 50 in the Amplified Classic. Whatever I speak, I'm saying exactly what my father has told me to say and in accordance with his instructions. And Jesus never said, it's not my will. It's not the Father's will to heal you. He never said, keep your sickness. He never said, come back later. He never said, not this time, Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> he never said that. No. And we know from what no. Jesus said of himself, I say whatever I hear from the Father. He didn't hold anything back. And he never said anything outside the will of God. Yep. But you know, George, in all of this, the important part is not being double-minded. Right. Not going back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. You've got to settle this. Gotta settle it. Because James says, he said, um, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally. He wants you to have this, but let him ask in faith, yeah. nothing wavering. He that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. And don't think that, let that man think he'll receive anything from the Lord, not because God's punishing you, but you don't have the ability to right. take it. That's why we're offering this. Yes. This is because not only does God want you well, Brother Copeland wants you well, Sister <laughs> Copeland wants you well, Pastor George wants you well, Pastor Terry wants you well, everybody at KCM wants you well. And so we're giving you these products so that you can hear the word, see the word, get it in your eyes mm -hmm. with these healing promises. Yep. It says Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, but it's scripture. They're bringing the book to you, but it's just scripture. And it's laid out in a way that progressively takes you through understanding God's will about healing. It's one verse right after the other, but in multiple translations. So if you don't quite get it from this version, maybe you get it from another right. Right. and get you started underlining and make notes. And the one that stands <laughs> out to you, just stick with that one for a while. And then, Pastor, we have this MP3. Oh, yeah. With eight, eight. messages, eight tremendous preaching messages. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word, and faith for healing is built by hearing the word of God, yeah. and that's what you yeah. get in this. Healing, it is always God's will. It's not the <coughs> right. only thing we have to offer, but we are giving you these <coughs> products so that you can get to a place to where you are not double-minded. As Brother Hagin, we used to say, that I know it's God's will for me to be well, and you can't beat it out of me with a baseball <laughs> right. bat. No. I don't want to go through that, but <laughs> praise the Lord. So we've got somebody coming up, the announcer right now, to tell you how you can get your free Healing Promise package. From the beginning of creation, God's will was for mankind to live in wholeness, spirit, soul, and body. His will for you hasn't changed. In fact, the Bible is full of promises for you to be healed. Get the Healing Promise package and receive the audio teaching by Kenneth Copeland Healing, It Is Always God's Will, as well as the Healing Promises book by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and the Psalm 103 card to help you declare God's word wherever you go. Understand that healing is a promise coming from the very life force of God. When Jesus defeated the curse and was raised with resurrection life, he made a way for that life force to flow from the Father to you. At the same time he paid for your salvation, he paid for your physical healing. Gain victory over every struggle and live in divine health. Feed yourself on the healing promises of God and be transformed and renewed, spirit, soul, and body. God wants you well, and it is His will for you to be healed. Get your free copy of the Healing Promise Package and take hold of God's plan for your healing. Use these free study resources to build your faith and receive your healing and wholeness today. 
go to kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01-225-787-310. Free offer good for 30 days. Postage charges may apply. Contact your regional office today. Take the word of faith wherever you go with the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. Build your faith through powerful articles from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and other guest authors. Read encouraging stories and testimonies of real life victory and equip your kids for spiritual growth in Commander Kelly's Corner. Download a digital copy for your tablet or mobile device. Sign up for your free monthly subscription or download your copy today on our KCM website. We want to pray for you right now. We're believing God with you for whatever is going on in your life, especially where your physical body is concerned. So just close your eyes if you can, wherever you are, and just put your hand over your heart and receive this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that it is your will for this one to be healed and well and whole. You sent your word and you heal your people. And I thank you, Lord, that you are manifesting your goodness to them right now. We believe for that miracle. We stand in faith for the manifestation of the healing of God in them. And thank you, Lord, that you are, you are doing this. You are manifesting yourself in them. And we praise you and honor you for your goodness and your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We love you. God loves you, and he wants you well. And just from this point forward, begin to thank God for yes. your healing. Thank you, Lord. And don't forget, you, now we are giving you this, this, the word of God concerning healing, where you can know that you know that you know that you know how much it is God's will for you to be well. You put it in your eyes. You put it in your ears with this MP3. And the information, of course, right there on your screen. But I also wanted to let you know about the Branson Healing School that will be coming up in April, so you can make plans now. That's, that meeting is set so that you can come and hear the Word of God, get answers that you need from heaven, but also for that healing school on Saturday morning. So I encourage you to come. It's April 4th through the 6th. You can go to kcm.org slash events on the website there and get the information that you need. We have testimonies. We were just talking about one yeah, oh, yeah. of a friend of ours yes. that was healed in one of those meetings. And so we're encouraging you to be a part. But until tomorrow, join us again. Remember this, God, God loves you, you we, we love, love you, and, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Watch the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast free on kcm.org.uk or KCM's Roku channel. If you would like a free copy of the broadcast to put into your faith library, you can download it on kcm.org.uk straight to your computer or mobile device. Keep your heart full of the Word of God and continue to grow in faith. Every believer has a voice, and it is the voice of victory.